listeners and viewers, Chris Frederick from StretchToWin.com, Stretch to Win Institute. We are very excited. I am very excited. My wife is very excited to uh, host Dr. Yat Van Der Waal, MD, PhD, who will be doing a course with us at our facility here in Phoenix on Saturday, July 14th and 15th. It's a 1.5 day course. And I will call, I'll read it. It's called Fascia Beyond Just a Connective Tissue System, question mark, about the architecture of your inner body. So without further delay, welcome, Yap, as he allows yeah. me to call him. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, could you just let everyone know um, what your PhD is in? My PhD officially is in anatomy. I graduated on a thesis, which is about the organization uh -oh, of proprioception. And it came out, and that's why it's so important that we all think that our locomotor system is a summation of, you know, the three first chapters of the anatomy book, muscles, ligaments, and, mus and bones. And we, can, we discovered that the organization of your proprioception has nothing to do with that. It's not organized in muscles, bones, and ligaments. And that completely is in harmony with the other concept that was coming up in those days. We're talking about the late 80s of the last century. And that was that the brain does not know about muscles. The brain is not organized in muscles. It's not organized in bones. And, in, it, and therefore also your proprioception is not organized in anatomical structures. Your proprioception is organized according to forces and to uh, forces and powers that are transduced and transmitted through the system. So that was my, my PAD work. And uh, I think it's important that I can, yeah, now connect a more holistic or, <coughs> say, a more um, complementary approach of the organization of a locomotive system with scientific arguments. Well, it, it, the title of your course, connected, is it is, uh, Beyond Connected Tissue System, about the yeah. architecture of your inner body. So proprioception, interoception, is is the architecture of the is part of the architecture of the inner body, is it of not? Course. Of yeah. course, yeah. Yeah. And so and, I guess wrapping that back to really your passion, I, I would say, is your embryology. Um, yeah. What does embryology say about uh, the body, mind, spirit, as we, as practitioners, work on actual people. Yeah. Why, why should we take this course in terms of what it, will it inform us um, more scientifically about the body, mind, spirit? Because everybody's talking about body, mind therapy. Will this now yeah. more have a, a scientific, some scientific basis? Yeah. Uh, a body, mind, the body, mind problem nowadays is more and more is being reduced to the concept that. You know, mind is in the brain and the rest is your body. I mean, some people consider the body to start somewhere here, and this is something else, which is an old-fashioned, dualistic way of thinking. Right. And I uh, am true to the, let's say, the classical dualism, and that is that body and soul are not located or are not uh, should not be approached in an anatomical way. Don't look, don't search for the spirit or the soul anywhere in your body. Your whole body is an expression of the dual being that we are, and we are a being of mind and body. And that is what the main thing I learned from the embryo, that we are not created by the body, that we are not produced by the body, that my mind, my my being, Jaap van der Waal, is not produced by an organ, and an organ on its third is produced by the body. No, that from the very beginning on, an embryo is a being of mind and body, and shapes and forms its body. And later on, we start to move with that. The, the key word, in my embryology, in my view about fascia, is always motion. And in that, I feel myself, you know, uh, fully supported by the magic word of Andrew Taylor Still, man is mind motion matter. And motion is the key word. Motion is the key word because with motion, with movement, we shape. With movement, we behave, we do. And the embryo also is moving. Our body is not, our body is not an anatomical uh, spatial structure. Our body is a living being, and that means it appears in time. It is a constant process. My body is a constant process, if I say that incorrectly. <coughs> yes, you did. I have, a, yeah. I have a question that just popped into my head. Tom Myers call, calls, uh, has this term called dyskinesia, uh, of people having this 
lack of proprioception for a better term terminology. Yeah. Of course, we all were born with the nervous system, but the exercise of mo of movement, as you put it, uh, with this society, many people sitting all day and not moving. I was thinking yeah. more about the embryo with uh, the mother. There's a growing yeah. embryo, fetus to embryo, um, or sorry, I may have it mixed mixed around. I'm not an expert in, in the development aspect, but uh, so forgive me for my terminology if I say something a little off. Yeah. But uh, my thought really is, I have this image of the working farm, pregnant woman on a farm, working as they used to say until the baby is ready to come out. She drops it in the field, attends to it, and goes back to work. So movement, movement, movement up until birth. Whereas today. You have women that are not moving at all. It, maybe it's part of their lifestyle, and then the birthing, uh, the, the part tuition, the pregnancy doesn't change it. They're still immobile. How does this affect the embryo on an embryo level? Do you think maybe there's no science, scientific evidence for this, but can that actually affect the, the, the person inside in terms of whether the mother is constantly moving the way nature, the way humans yeah. have developed yeah. Yeah. in tribal societies versus today? Yeah. Yeah, well, about this specific uh, issue that you uh, bring to uh, bring to uh, speak about, I cannot be so. Um, I cannot give the right uh, or um, support a scientific answer. But a general uh, issue could be that, of course, uh, the way we shape our body, also our locomotor system, our whole brain, is the motion, and that is. By the main word I learned from Blechschmidt, which is a very famous uh, German embryologist, that our soul, everything we do psychologically, is pre-exercised in the shaping of the body. So the shaping of the body is a pre-exercise for what we later can do physiologically yes. and later can do psychologically. Even, and then I come a little bit in the, yeah, in the direction of people like Rudolf Steiner, even our thinking activity is a metamorphosis, you know, of lower levels of psychological, morphological, uh, physiological, morphological expression and movement. Can I give so you an example? The more you are able to move in the room, <coughs> the more challenge to shape and to do, yeah, that is, of course, profitable for your later motoric, but also psychomotor, also psychological mobility and activity. Of well, if, if I give you a personal example, I was a professional ballet dancer and I started late at the age of 17. I was very fortunate that according to my teachers, I had the, the correct body, the correct skill and talent. And I, I made rapid progress until I got accepted into a major dance company and then I got injured. So I never got a chance, you know, to be famous. <laughs> but the point is I got to see, uh, I started at 17 but many of the girls in the, uh, in the dance world have started at four years old. And you can literally see, yes, they have some, if you want to call it genetic selection, because only certain people, very small percentage of people who start the ballet can actually finish as a professional. You yeah. Know? There's certain anatomical requirements. But even yeah. with those requirements, you can see exactly what you said. The body, mind, and spirit of a ballet dancer, it, it's all-encompassing. This is their life, their belief system, and their body does change because their knees yes. start to get more hyperextended in what we call genu val uh, valgus, uh, sorry, uh, genu recurvatum. So the yeah. back, the back yeah. of the knee becomes more yeah. beyond zero degrees neutral. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. the f then when they put their feet together, turned out, the heels yeah. are separated. Why? Because the knees are touching. So they bow. Yeah. This wow. is considered wow. aesthetically pleasing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they, they are actually forming their body according to a theoretical aesthetic. Yeah, okay, that, in, a way, in, a, in a way that's what Rex also said. Yeah. I mean, that the way you <coughs> shape is, um, is, so to say, opening the possibilities with which you can later on physiologically shape. That's why I always emphasize that my locomotion is on the motion. Locomotion, better word is posturing. I mean, a continuous, very rapid, you know, gestaltung, giving shape. And that is also what later on you can do uh, in your mind, in your, in your psyche. And so, uh, remember how important we nowadays, we have discovered that how important, you know, fine motoric activity of fingers is 
or your capacity to calculate and to become an analytical thinker. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I look around me and I see a lot of things going wrong, yeah. very wrong. Yeah. One finger Joe. Yeah. Yeah, Every maybe point. that's also true for whole body movement and for the way we, uh, yeah, the way we people walk and communicate. Uh, my keyword is gesture. You know, I'm not looking for motions. I'm looking for gestures. How is a how a limb is shaped and what is pre-exercised in the shaping of my hand? You know, is another gesture that is pre-exercised in my leg, and that enables and creates later physiological and psychological conditions for gesturing on the physiological psychological level I it's not one-to-one it. -one. i mean and it's it's nowadays you consider you know the body as, as a neutral you know a process that goes its way by means of genes and self-programming and the result is the brain and the brain starts to talk and be, to become the upon the wall and there's an absolute wrong model about ourselves that we are produced by this body, that this body, so to say, has nothing to do with our mind, and it's just a, a, a brain machine or whatever. No, I think that's wrong. I, I think I totally agree. And are, I am in agreement with you. Um, in, in ballet training, for instance, they use imagery. And Sip. they use image, images yeah, to, image, to yeah. learn movement. So uh -huh. the only way we totally understand lifting our body is the teacher or the coach has to come up with images that work for our brain to imagine we can indeed lift our body to impossible heights. Really, yeah. Really, because the whole aesthetic is an actual impossibility. There is no such thing as a 180 degree turnout of your legs. Yeah. No one yeah. can do, there's very few people who can do this and they're anatomical anomaly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But everyone's yeah. trying to achieve this. So in the same, so I've seen people use the mind to change the body and they use the imagery to achieve things that normally you wouldn't achieve without using the mind to influence yeah. the body to do those kinds of yeah. things. Yeah. And actually, ultimately, the dancer cannot do the highest level of dance without having had that kind of mind-body training. Yeah, okay. And, yeah. The, body, and yeah. the body has to change sure. in yeah. order for yeah. them to be able to do these things. Yeah, yeah. So I'm totally yeah. in agreement with you on any level. This is an extreme example, an elite athletic performer. Yeah, but it's just as true on any basic level from gait. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Okay, and that has to do with uh, yeah, that is related to our view on the organization of our body. If we are, you know, a muscle man, then very soon there comes the image of oh well, we are a marionette of the brain, and the signals from motion come from here. And if you cut this, no, you cannot move anymore. Or the other model that constantly on various levels our brain is constantly tuning in with what is mobility, locomotion, posturing, activity in the body itself. I mean, and the body is not <coughs> as marionette innervated by the brain. No, it's a constant dialogue. And in between this dialogue, there is, so to say, your consciousness and awareness is enabled. And it's not Produced by the brain, it needs brain, it needs a mind, but also a body. And on these two conditions, we are, you know, conscious, active, uh, voluntary, um, volative beings. So it seems to me that ultimately, I mean, the course, I can see the information you're going to give. And of course, I already know a bit from having taken your course for four days yeah. at Thomas Myers a few, two years ago, I think it yeah. was, in a nice hot summer in Maine. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And I will be amazing again this year. Yeah. There, there you go. It was excellent. It was full. Everybody loved it. And so that's why I invited you to come to our place for an abbreviated or condensed version of that. Yeah. Um, but I, I already start having new ideas just from this conversation. And it's I think the, the thing is we all want to know how to best inspire our clients and patients, how to best feel their bodies, like you're saying, with yeah. Proprioceptive, act, if for lack of a better term, proprioceptive kinesthetic activities beyond just range of motion, these boring weight exercises. It's truly feeling the innerness, like you said, the in yeah. inside of your body with the breath and other uh, things. Yeah. I think your course will inspire us to go to another level of yeah. how can we help each other come up with better ideas of how we can cue our clients with touch with words, and so yeah. on. What do you think? Yeah. Well, what I saw 
a little bit of your work and the work of your wife and Tom Myers. I saw some. I have seen some congruency, and that again has was uh, you know very um, familiar to me. I think that human uh, locomotion or posturing, but also human um, mind and mindfulness, all has to do with balancing and centering, and that. That doesn't make us different or better than animals, but it's something we have to develop. Our our centered, our our center, our balancing, our you know psychological posturing, and yeah, that is constant reciprocally. That that the body and the mind constantly have to work with each other to train each other in balancing and becoming yourself. And that becoming yourself is not only an act of a, of a brain, but also an act, and not only an act of your soul, but is the essential gesture of the human body. And there might be, yeah, a relationship with the work you and Tom are doing. Well, on that note, I'm going to end with the balance of the mind, body, and spirit, because yeah. you can you always have to come back to your core and center on yeah. so yeah. many levels from which you can then deviate and go outward, and then come back yeah. to rest and balance again. I love that. I yeah. practice uh, Taoism, Tai Chi Chi Kung. It's kind of from the, yeah. the Asian uh, yeah. aspects of things that it's totally in agreement with these universal principles. So all I want to say is you have to come to this course, whoever's listening and watching. We did it uh, in 2009. We heard Yap at Amsterdam, it, it was, at the Fashion Research oh, yeah. Congress. We heard you three, of, three years ago, I think, at the Washington, D.C. FRC. Oh, and then uh, we need to have you back at our place so that um, movement and manual therapists and anyone else who's interested in the, this uh, beautiful topic of fascia beyond just a connective tissue system about the architecture of your inner body. That's the name of the course, July 14th and 15th. It's a 1.5 day course. Sign up at stretchtwin.com. Anything else you would like to say? Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, I will do my... Otherwise, best you know to to present your the people that come there, yeah, about uh, the truth, the truth, the, the, the trueness or so of our mind, body as a, a yeah polarity duality system, and that we are not by muscles and bodies and organs alone. There is something else in us that has to create a constant balance in our mind. Absolutely, something like that. that. Thank you so much. We know you'll Thank do you. your best, and we we'll look forward to it. You can stay on the line. I'm going to end the interview. Thank you for yeah. listening. Stretchedwin.com, Yap Vanderbal, July 14th. Look for it on our courses, workshops. We'll see you there. Bye-bye.